Okay, so Creon and the guard have just left. Um, <clears throat> we continue on here. So that means now that the Creon and the guard have left, the only people on stage would be the chorus. This choral ode is known as the Ode to Man, or the Ode to Humanity, the Ode to Humankind. Um, this is probably one of the most famous choral odes in all of Greek tragedy. And it goes through, and, uh, and it's a song about um, all the many ways that humans have become amazing as creatures, right? There are many wonders in the world, but nothing more amazing than man. Okay, and it goes through all the things that human beings uh, do to make themselves amazing, right? Um, we can cross the seas in winter storm. Um, we can uh, harness the unwearying earth and turn our plow back and forth year after year. So we grow things. We farm, right? So we sail. We farm. We're skillful of thought. We make traps. Um, we... Uh, Let's see, what else do we do? We overpower the wild beast that roams the mountain. We tame the horse. We, uh, we put a, a yoke over the necks of bulls, okay? Um, we've mastered speech and thought, ways of government. Look at all the crafts that humans have developed. These the Greeks would have all called techne. Um, a techne is a skill or a craft, some kind of human knowledge that we have. Um, and uh, so, um, his contrivance is skillful beyond hope. We sometimes move towards the good, sometimes towards evil. Um, now, uh, we see here, uh, so there's this extended praise of humanity, right? Um, and shows the way we are lofty, the way we keep justice, the way we follow laws, right? And all that is kind of a, um, a little bit of a pause in the action that uh, gives us time for the guard to come back, because the guard is now about to come back. Um, but it also kind of sets a nice context for the coming scene, right? Here we are, we, we've heard from the chorus all the great things that humankind has done, but now we're, gonna about, we're about to witness maybe one of the worst things that humans have done. Um, I mean, we are, after all, going to witness a tragedy here, so let's see how that ode helps establish context, okay? Um, all right, so now we have Antigone being brought in by a guard, okay? Um, the uh, chorus says they can't believe it, right? This is young Antigone. How could she be the one who's caught obeying the ruler's decree? Um, the guard shouts out for Creon. Creon now enters. So now notice everybody we've got on stage now. We've got the chorus. We've got the guard who has apprehended Antigone. And now we've got Creon coming in. All right, and Creon says, what is it? You again? Um, to the guard, and the guard says, she did it. We caught her burying the body, okay? Um, so, he uh, then goes on, they, uh, they continue to explain how it happened, all right? How did you catch her? Um, and the guard says, she was burying the body with her own hands. That's the whole of it, all right? Uh, the guard says, I saw her burying the body you said should be left unburied. Now, Creon wants to be absolutely sure here because, um, you know, he's going to execute whoever buried this body. So um, he needs to know for certain that Antigone really did this if he's going to put that penalty upon her, right? So the guard explains how it was, okay? All right. Um, so... Here's what the guard says. We went to the body and we swept all the earth that had covered the body. So they, all the dust that, Antig uh, that whoever put that on first put on there, all that dust that was put on there um, was taken off, right? So now the body is exposed again. Um, and then we uh, stayed awake and kept watching. And then all of a sudden we saw a dust storm. Uh, the wind raised up a dust storm, all right? 
Um, and then we heard uh, a screaming, right? A girl came into view and she was screaming. And look at the, look at the metaphor here. She was screaming as a, a bitter heart piercing, piercing cry like a mother bird who finds her nest empty and her newborn young nowhere to be found. So there's that maternal image. So Antigone is screaming like a mother who's lost her young, okay? And she screams like this when she sees the naked corpse, the corpse that has been uncovered, all right? Um, and now she scatters, now they watched her scatter earth over the corpse. Um, she lifts up a bronze jug and pours a sacred offering of milk, honey, and water. And we ran and hunted her down. Uh, she wasn't afraid. She didn't deny it, okay? Um, so, uh, and the, the guard explains his mixed feelings. He said, look, I'm glad I caught her because now I'm not going to be punished for it. Um, but I'm also sad about this because I don't want to make her suffer. All right. Um, so now begins the, uh, the conflict and first argument between Creon and Antigone. Okay. So. Uh, I'm going to pause here and we'll start a new screencast for uh, the arrival um, or the argument between Creon and Antigone. Okay? Oops.